All right, we're going to jump right in because I'm super excited about my special guest today. And I always say that, super excited, but I am. I'm really excited. I'm Julie Clough. I am the founder of Build a Life After Loss and the host of this show and a grief coach. And I have with me Seidel Schultz, who is a, uh, who is a musical intuitive. And I'm going to have her explain what that means. Uh, thank you, Julie. I'm... I'm excited too. And I just wanted to say really quick, if I can, that I love that you're like, I always say I'm so excited. <laughs> I think that's so great. I, I tell, um, I've got a class going right now and I'm like, this is my favorite. And I'm like, wait, I said that last week. And I said that, and it's just like that song from the sound of music, a few of my favorite things. And then the list of all the favorite things goes on and on and on. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so it, if you're excited about every podcast, I think that's awesome. It's like totally on point with what you need to do. Okay. So musical intuitive. What is that? I help music or I help music. I use music to help women hear and express their hearts. So I can hear things with, through music. So when people sing, um, I will hear their hearts through their voice. I mean, even if they don't sing to me, because we speak in such a melodic way, like everybody has their own rhythm, right? And everybody has their own melody that they speak with, like the ups and the downs of their voice. Um, and so people can just speak to me and I will be able to hear the melody in their voice and really help them heal what is going on with their hearts and help them he hear what's going on in their hearts to then get them to the place where they can express what they really want to express instead of what they have been expressing. So that's mm -hmm. like one half of what I do. The other half of what I do, which is so much fun too, is to do song translations. So songs hold incredible meanings for us. And I'm talking like the musicality of the song, um, and the lyrics of the song, like, you know, you hear a song and it just like hits you and you either want to listen to it all the time or you are, are crying to it because it's just hit your heart. Do you know what I'm saying? You've experienced exactly, that before. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. And so I take that song and I sit down with it for a while and I really pull, like, I listen to the meaning. I pull the meaning from the song that that song has for you. And the really great thing about this is, is that it could be a message from your heart to you. It could be a message from your business to you. It could be a message from God to you, from Jesus to you. Like so many possibilities. I've had people contact me um, and their uh, dad passed away and they woke up hearing a song and it was a message from their dad. Oh, wow. um, and it was just like, I cried a lot during that song translation. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was a really incredible process. Um, it's an incredible process to be able to hear these messages. And then the people can take that message from the song and understand what the song is like a concrete message that the song is telling them. And now they have the feeling because music has this really incredible ability to speak to our hearts, right? So I think there's a quote, I can't remember exactly how it goes, which is terrible, but it's something like music makes um, us feel a feeling, a song or and lyrics make us think a thought and a song makes us feel a feeling, right? Mm. Words, words make us think a thought and then a song makes us feel a feeling. And so that's what happens is we have this song um, and the song opens our heart to the messages that we have. Then we get a physical concrete message. So uh, the, like the translation that I do, and that's to our mind and then to our spirit. And we can use the two together to create physical movement in our lives. So mm. that was, a I love that. And if, and if you've been listening to the podcast for any length of time, you've heard me talk about using music to, to move emotion and how I, I used it during my divorce from my first husband, where I would just sit and listen to music and it would allow me like sad, sad music. And it allowed me to move that sadness through me. And at the time, 
and I've said this before, if you've been here, you know this. At the time, I thought it was pathetic. I thought it was so pathetic because I would just lay, it was back in the days of the big speakers, <laughs> and I would just lay on the floor in between big speakers and listen to sad music and let that, and let the tears come and, and, and everything. And now I look at it and I go, that was exactly what I needed. Music has been a big part of my journey. And so when, um, when I found you, Seidel, I was so excited about the, the messages that you were sharing. And then, uh, okay, so when you're listening to this, uh, it's Christmas time and, and you did a translation of When We Believe as one of your Christmas songs that you were doing uh, translations from. I, I think we when we believe it can be a Christmas as well as all year long, kind of like the, my favorite things tune that we, for some reason we think of as Christmas, but it's also all year. But when we believe is from the Prince of Egypt. It was a song from that, that animated movie a few years ago, which, uh, which I have loved from the beginning. It's got special meaning to me, but when I heard you give this translation and you use some magical words in that translation and it caught my attention because you talk about miracles and I'm all about miracles, miracles in the darkness. That's the name of my book. And you talked about hope. And what do I talk about all the time? We have to, it's so important to hold on to hope. So I'm excited. Let's jump in and, and start giving us a little um, information about this song and what you heard and the translation. Okay, here we go. Dun, 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 dun. When you believe. <laughs> okay, so it starts out and it talks about many nights we've prayed with no proof anybody could anyone could hear, right? Those are like the first few lyrics. And what I heard was everyone has a miracle that they are wanting, hoping, and praying for everybody, every single person. And, and they could have had that miracle that they've been wanting for months or even years. And I think it's very common for people to have a miracle that they've been praying for or hoping for, for years, right? I, I think sometimes we get caught up in this. It's just me that's wanting this. At least I know <laughs> I've been there. That's I'm like, so gosh, true. I think I'm the only one that's been wanting a specific miracle in my life for years. And then I talk to somebody else and they're like, I've been wanting this miracle for years. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm not alone in this, right? right. We want something, um, something that, that they want to be different, something that we want to be different. And we keep hoping for that thing and praying, even though nothing seems to be happening with it. Mm. Right. And the thing is, is that with this miracle, it seemed so far away that it's, it's hard to imagine what it's like to have it in our lives. Mm. I know that's like one of the things that they talk about with manifesting is imagine that it's there. And I think sometimes with these miracles that we've been wanting, it's hard. It's hard to grasp what it would feel fully mean. And, and so the, the lyrics in this part of the song is a hopeful song we barely understood. That makes so much sense. And in the context of, of grief and healing and you know, at the beginning of you know, when you've experienced a tremendous heartbreaking loss, you can't imagine ever being out of pain. You just right. can't even imagine it. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we can, we can get really, really stuck in that, that space, but having that hopeful, and I love the definition of hope because we a lot of times think of hope as a wish and we, we associate it with a wish, but it's more than that. It's like mm -hmm. this certainty that this could, this could happen. Yes. I love that so much. I almost think like a wish is something that we think and a hope is something that we feel mm. like it's in our heart. And, um, this is totally a side note, but, um, I was reading this book and it was really incredible. She, and she was talking about the electromagnetic waves of the heart, how we have electromagnetic waves of our heart and in our mind and the electromagnetic waves of our heart are 50 times, have 50, 50 times the amplitude and a thousand times the strength of the brain waves of the electromagnetic waves of the brain. 
So when we feel something, so I, I think of amplitude, amplitude is like how big the waves are and strength is how long that they will carry out. So if it's 50 times the amplitude, it means it's going up higher. So we're basically like, if we're running, we're running faster and we're able to keep that speed for much longer. So when we put things in our heart, like instead of wishing for it, we hope for it. That, that means that we'll carry that the strength will carry us even mm. further. Do you know Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's a beautiful explanation. Okay, so that's how I feel about hope. I love what you said. I love, love, love what you said. Okay, Um, so we have a good idea or part of an idea of how it would change our lives, this miracle that we were wanting. We have a good idea of how it would change our lives, but not a full scope. Um, And we, I think it's common for us to be afraid. Like part of us is afraid that we'll get it. Mm-hmm. And part of, of us afraid that we, it will never happen. And so we're, we're sitting on this fence and we're kind of like teetering between, um, will it happen? Do I, do I really want it to happen? Because I'm so familiar with where I'm at and what I'm feeling, what I'm experiencing that being in this place of having this miracle would be really scary. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, absolutely. And then when I think about people grieving, if they've lost someone they love, they're, they're afraid if they let go of the pain that they're letting go of the person. Right. And so there's, there's that fear that, that somehow that will create more separation, but there's also that hope that things could get better. Right. You're still, you're still hoping because you don't, you're not necessarily comfortable in the place that you're at Mm -hmm. and you don't want to stay there, but getting getting to the new place can be really scary. So the question is, which way will we go? Um, which direction will we tip towards? And I, I hear in this song, especially um, in this part, um, it says, we have been moving mountains long before we knew we could. Mm. And that was like, when I, so the first time I printed this song off, I was asked on a Monday to perform it on a Saturday and I printed it off. And I ran through it and I just like sobbed the whole, I was just like, oh my gosh, what an incredible song because I hear in that part, the thing is, here's the thing. We have been moving mountains. Um, impossible things have been happening in our lives and it's only a matter of recognizing that they have been happening. So when we can take and recognize the small miracles that are happening in our lives, then we can start to see the, the bigger ones, you know, sometimes our expectations around a certain miracle are so big that it feels hard to see what has been happening. So if this is the case for you, start seeing the really small miracles around them, even if it's as simple as a bird flying in your yard. Like I stepped out, I was standing in my yard one, one day in the middle of the summer and it was my my quest, like I had made a commitment for three months to see a miracle every day, to see the miracles in my life every day. And I stepped out of my yard. I was just taking a break from my work. I stepped out of my yard. I was standing there and uh, suddenly, I don't even know why I do know why, but you know, in the moment I'm like, I don't know why I was looking in the trees and um, there's a hawk in the trees in our front yard. And I see these birds like dive bombing the hawk from different sides because they didn't want the hawk there and the hawk left. And I just stood there and I thought, what a miracle to see, like, to, to see this and to experience nature firsthand, like how there, I have never experienced seeing a hawk being dive bombed by other birds. I've never seen a hawk like outside seen a hawk right in my yard. And I thought, what a miracle. And so it's like, even simple things, small things like that can be miracles. And then they op- allow us to open our hearts to see the miracles that, that are surrounding the big things that we want. So even if it doesn't, even if it doesn't feel like it has anything to do with the miracle that you want, it still opens us up to seeing those miracles. Does that make well, sense? It's such an interesting phrase too. 
like just even that phrase from the song it's like Mm -hmm. we've been moving mountains long before we knew we could like it's such an interesting concept I love that I love what you shared there thank you yeah we we are experiencing those miracles whether we see them or not um so that that's what's so great about that and sometimes it's after the fact and that's that's what like I you know when I wrote my book it's like after my kids died and I was going through all of this and then I saw all the miracles that happened that prepared me, even though yep. you can never be prepared for something like that. But no, right. Um, but I I saw the miracles that happened around that before, during, and after. And sometimes it's later that we really recognize it. The sooner we can recognize it, the better, right? Yes. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I love so much. I love so much that you said before during and after. And I think sometimes it really, like when we're in a space and we can't see miracles, it's a lot easier to see them that happened, you know, after we've been through it, like we look back and then we can see the miracles because it's so, so heavy. Um, and I think as we get into this space where we becomes a habit to look for the miracles, even if we're starting by looking at the miracles that have happened in the past, then it makes it a lot easier. At least this is how I've experienced it. Oh, that's been my experience too. Absolutely. Yeah. It makes it so much easier to see the miracles that are happening right now, because I, I know I have a testimony, you know, if you want to say it like that, I want to say it like that. I have a testimony that they happen in my life. And so then I can see how they're currently happening. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready for the chorus? I'm ready. We're ready. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay, the chorus is so great. It says there can be miracles when you believe. Though hope is frail, it's hard to kill. Who knows what miracles you can achieve when you believe somehow you will when you believe. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited for you to share this because it's 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 a, amazing. It's amazing. Okay, so in <laughs> so in this part Well, uh, the last line says, you will when you believe. That's the last line of the chorus. Um, And so this part of the song said to me, we are starting to breathe in the possibility of our miracle. But here, but not necessarily the miracle we had our sight set on, but the one that God has in store for us and wants to give us. The reason that hope is so hard to kill is because God planted it in our hearts with us. Um, That's why no matter how much we struggle or how long we have prayed for something and it's not happening, um, we still keep hoping for it. We still keep wanting that miracle to happen in our lives. So when I heard this message, this part of the, the message from the song, I actually saw an image of God and us kneeling on our hearts, like our heart is the earth, right? And I saw us digging in the earth of our hearts, like with God. Oh, and um, I saw this happening and I saw dirt all over our hands and it was really incredible. And I was like, what the heck is this that I'm seeing? And God was like this, we planted it together. This is the creation that we made together. And just to think, I don't, I don't know. I just feel like just to think of this image of him being there with us and kneeling there with us and planting this thing in our hearts and, and it's frail because he planted the seed and it's starting to grow. So we have not seen the fruits of our miracle yet we haven't seen the fruits of the labor our desires our hopes we haven't seen that yet um so it's not big enough that it's sprouting fruit it's still like this small little like limbs coming out of the the earth but we can't kill it 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 can't be killed because god put it there um (sighs) that imagery is so incredible and and i've thought about it it so much since you mentioned that is, you know, healing is in our DNA. And and when you, you talk about that, it's like hope is in our DNA. It's a part of us. It's a part of us. It's like implanted. 
so cool. So cool. I love it. Yeah. It, and it, it, it makes me feel better. It makes me personally feel better about the things that I'm hoping for. Like I didn't just imagine it because if I have something that I've hoped for, for this long and prayed for, for this long, it still hasn't happened. Then that means that it's not just something that I thought of. It's something that God gave to me too. Mm, and to me that feels like I don't know validating for wanting it for one but then two it gives me the strength to keep going because if this is something that it's not just something that I want but something that God wants for me it's an eventuality at least that's how I feel about it yeah I love that and and how often do we dismiss our own desires thinking that maybe we're being selfish or whatever but in reality it's part of who we are and it's part of our yes. reason that we're here yes exactly exactly Beautiful. so the next part in the song says um who knows what miracles you can achieve this is part of the chorus but what i heard and just like i can't help but hear this every time now so i don't actually hear what what miracles um who knows what miracles you can achieve? I hear who knows what miracles you can receive. Oh, and Ooh. I was like, oh my gosh, who knows what miracles I can receive? Um, God, God does. <laughs> and this is the thing about receiving the miracles is that, that it's not of our own doing. Like that's what makes it a miracle, right? It's not of my doing when we receive and are in alignment with God. And when we believe that we'll be able to receive the next steps, that's when, um, that we need to do to receive the miracle. That's, that's our part, right. Is just believing that we can receive the miracle. Um, and then it's God's job to provide the miracle for us. Do you know, like that guy that, that went to Jesus and said, help thou my unbelief. Oh, right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, it's, it's that part of it that, that comes in. So it's not our job to, to achieve the miracle. It's our job to receive the miracle mm. and it's God's job to provide. We, we don't, we, we do have a part to play, but it's a small part. And that, that, that's the believing part. The miracle comes from God. Our job is to work on our belief so that we can hear the next steps that we need to take. And so that we can see, like, see the miracles that are happening around the desire that we have, because when we see those miracles happening, that's when our hope gets that's when our hope strengthens and our tree grows. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I guess bigger. Okay. So then the next part of the song, this is like the middle of the journey. Um, we're in the middle of the journey and we've been praying for so long for the miracles that we've wanted and we lose hope, right? Or we take a step back with our hope. And it's as, as if we have completely given up, but like it says in the beginning of the song, we can't fully let go because God planted that in our heart, right? Um, so we still hold on to some parts of it, but it's in the moment that we decide and we like really put our foot down, so to speak, then we claim what our heart's desire is. And we step into this place where we are willing to shift our focus to the very next miracle in the steps of miracles. Mm. So the miracle that we want, we have steps of miracles. And so that's another reason why um, it's so important that we're seeing the miracles that are happening in our lives and not just waiting till the event is over and then looking back to see the miracles um, is because there are, there are steps of miracles that will happen in order to get to the big miracle. No, it's such an important thing to remember, right? So important to remember yeah. because we kind of sometimes in our 30 minute show mentality where everything gets resolved in 30 minutes <laughs> we we think that oh i just you know if i hope for this then it's just going to show up as one big event right rather than just a continuous combination of faith and effort and hope and yeah. right by small and simple things great mm -hmm. things are brought to pass you know and it's it's in that um it's in that so um, I, I love sometimes, uh, oftentimes how song translations will come with like homework or an action step that you get to take. And the action step from this one 
is to list the miracles that you are currently in experiencing in your life in conjunction to what you're working on right now. Um, so that is like really important because you can listen to things and you can hear things, but once you apply something, that's when it, it's going to start changing your life. For sure. For sure. So yeah, and, I, um, and I feel like oh, just having, uh, having heard that translation and hearing it, hearing it now that it's, it's very applicable to us right now. Like it, you're listening. And so therefore it's applicable to you. There's no accident that you heard this translation. And so it's, it's not, it's applicable to anybody that hears the message. Yes, exactly. I think I, <laughs> I'm going to do this because I want to see the miracles that are happening around the big miracle that I'm wanting. So, um, the, the assignment, if you want to call it that, is to get a piece of paper out and write on the top of the piece of paper, miracles I've received in relation to, mm. and then write down what it is that it's in relation to. Do you know what I'm saying? So like yeah. miracles that I've received in relation to. When we do this, when we write, um, it is a form of expression. Um, and anytime we express, then, then it's like the creation of it happens right faster so when you start writing then your brain is like our brains are amazing like we want to be right so bad that <laughs> we will do anything to prove ourselves right so when we start writing something our brain is then going to start thinking of all the ways we are right in this and so it will we will come up with a list of the miracles that are are in that we have received in relation to our desired miracle I just wrote that down so I can start <laughs> making my list. <laughs> I know I'm excited to do it. Okay. So the next part, and I really love like, um, in the part, um, gosh, and I'm just forgetting the lyrics at the moment, this part where it changes and we like, and now I'm standing here. She says, now I'm standing here. Um, and I, felt that like, I'm trying to sing it when I was going through it the very first time. And I'm like, now I'm standing here and I'm like, I, I'm not standing. I'm sitting at my piano playing these <laughs> words. I need to be standing. I need to record the music of so this so that I can sing it and so I can sing it standing and say, now I'm standing here with heart so full I can't explain. And that is the paragraph that I just read. Our hearts will be filled when we are seeing the miracles that we are experiencing right now in our lives, mm -hmm. especially in conjunction with, with that big miracle that we are wanting. Right. So standing here, um, as saying words, I never thought I'd say sometimes when we've been praying for something for so long and in, it seems like nothing's happened. And then we start seeing the little miracles that are happening in our lives around that. Then we're like, Oh my gosh, I never thought I'd say anything moved with this. And now I'm seeing things are moving and it just feels, it feels so incredible. And then the next line is seeking faith and speaking words. So this is the part seeking faith and speaking words. Uh, we never thought we'd say so here in this moment, when you have all of the miracles written that you've received, whether they're directly related to the miracle that you're wanting or not, you have acted in faith. Mm -hmm. So it takes faith to see the miracles in our lives. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? That's like, super cool <laughs> to see that we, cause I think faith can be really, um, can be really hard to put our finger on and to describe, but to know that when we're seeing the miracles, like when we are recognizing them, it takes faith to recognize that. And so I kind of like, I don't know how silly this is, but I'm just like, yes, I'm doing it. I'm applying faith. Like <laughs> Yeah, this is a tangible way that I can say that I am applying faith in my life. Um, it takes faith to see the miracles and then you spoke them, right? So seeking faith and speaking words. And this is what's happening as you write them down, you're speaking those, those words. 
the world was created when God said, let there be light. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we are doing the same thing as we are speaking our miracles. We are continuing to create the cycle where, where we are speaking and experiencing the miracles through our words. And then it kind of gathers more speed, like it's rolling down a hill and then we see more and more. And then do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. (sighs) It makes me so happy. (laughs) Okay. So then it goes back to the chorus and it's, and the, the, what I heard was now we believe that there are miracles for us. Right. Mm -hmm. And when we believe we're more able to hear the exact miracle that we are needing right now. And God wants us to ask for those miracles. He is waiting, like anxiously waiting. I see him like this, please ask, please ask. I really (laughs) want to give it to you. And then he has moments of grace, you know, where he gives us these miracles that we did not ask for. I did not ask for a hawk to show up in my front yard and have birds dive vomit. (laughs) <laughs> um, you know, and there are other things that I'm just like, I can't believe that just happened in my life. I'm sure everybody has had those experiences. Like this blessing just happened in your life and you couldn't believe that it happened. That's like a moment of grace. Um, cause God is showing us what's possible, but he is waiting there for us to ask for these miracles. We have opened the door to what's possible to come next right? Mm -hmm. What, what we want to have happen next and what God wants for us to happen next. We are opening the door for that. Who knows what we can receive next? God does. Mm -hmm. So I'm breathing that in, like breathe that in. God knows what miracle I can ask for next. And we can even ask God, what miracle can I ask for next? Mm -hmm. And then we see it happen. And then we're like, oh my gosh, that miracle just happened. And we speak it. And then it opens the door for another miracle to happen because God has already paved the way for the miracle, no matter how different that road looks, um, like the different from the one that we think it's going to take to get us to that miracle. Do you know what I mean? Like we always have an idea of like, this is the miracle I want. We want it to look like (laughs) God knows what it needs to look like. (laughs) Yes, exactly. And so God knows that miracle. Um, I will continue to have miracles. I will receive miracles. Like these are the things, these are the affirmations that we can use. I will continue to receive miracles. I'm receiving miracles. The path for me to receive this miracle is already paved. I can't remember the scripture. It's Alma 13 something, Um, but it talks about how um, God has the foreknowledge. And so that means he, he knows that one plus one equals two. A, B, then C comes next, right? So if we are wanting this miracle, God knows how to get us from where we're at to where we want to go. And the, the that most fabulous thing that we can do is to take Jesus by the hand and say, guide me, come mm-hmm. with me on this journey because we don't have to do it on our own. Um, we can have that help. Um, and it is just our job to believe Like my responsibility is to believe and to see what is going on right now. My job job is to believe that miracles are happening to believe that I can see. I had to to share this story because it just came to my mind. It was um, several years ago. And and I I don't remember a lot of the details, but I remember the the main idea of the story. This, This woman that I knew, she had a health concern. She had a health issue. It was fairly a a big issue. And and she was really praying for a miracle in that situation. Then she ended up diagnosed with another health issue. And then it felt like not only was she not getting the miracle that she wanted, but here's something else is coming along. But as it turned out, as it turned out, she learned later that the new health condition, that there was, there was evidence. Like she found out there'd been studies or evidence of some kind, medical evidence that when that new condition showed up, it actually benefits the first one. Isn't that crazy? It was like, 
in this, <laughs> she was upset because she had this new condition, but in fact, the new condition was helping the previous so that she was able to heal from both. Oh my God. I wish I could remember the specifics, but this, I mean, it's been 20 years ago, you know, I can't remember the specifics, but I just remember hearing that story and going, boy, we just don't know, you know, we just don't know. And all, and, and how many times have I complained about a situation and then realized, oh, that was putting me in a position to take the next step, to receive the next miracle, to receive the next blessing. Yes. Oh my gosh. Crazy. Yes. I, I see that. I, I see that with like the, um, I think we all have like our guess many moments, right? We, mm -hmm. we all have those moments that are just like, Oh my gosh, I'm kneeling and guess I need this, like, please take this cup from me. And I'm just thinking as you're sharing, I prayed for something specific. And after I prayed for that and I fasted for it every Sunday for a month, um, and boy, did everything fall apart, like yeah. within weeks of me ending my month long fast. And, um, I would remember just being like, yeah, so if this is what's going to happen when I pray for big things like this. I'm done for big things because right. life just fell apart. Like we just, <laughs> you know, lost a ton of things in our lives. Um, but that thing that I wanted happened. It took years, years and years. And going through like losing almost everything is what it took for us to be able to get to the place to receive a miracle that I prayed for. So I really, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of prayed those terrible things to happen. But it really, it helped so much. I just, I love that. I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't love it at the time, but I love it now. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think, I think, um, that's it. Like that's it. It's, it's just our job to believe. And, um, then our, our actions naturally follow our belief. Like, of course there are things that we need to do. We're not just going to be like, okay, God, give me a meal. I really want a million dollars. And then it are like sleeping in and we're reading fiction books all day. Like that's not what happens. <laughs> but <laughs> as much as sometimes I want that to happen, you know, um, or we're just like, I believe that my children can go through the day without fighting <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Um, but when we, when we step into this place of belief that, and that it can happen, then when we hear the action steps that we need to take, the ones that we are responsible for, and we meet God in the middle. Mm, that is beautiful. I'm actually in the middle of reading the book Miracle Equation by Hal Elrod. He wrote Miracle Morning. Um, and it, it, the Miracle Equation is unwavering faith and extraordinary effort. And when we have that combination of belief in, in what it is that we want and, and, you, and you include your higher power in that, and then you have this, um, and then you're willing to take the steps that you, you hear that need to happen next, need to happen next, need to happen next, receiving those miracles all along the way, as you put forth the effort, mm -hmm. then miracles truly do happen. It sounds like an amazing book. Yeah. <laughs> I love it's it. A good one. It's a good one. Well, Seidel, that was beautiful. I just, I, I loved hearing it again. I actually, I heard your translation I guess it was a couple of weeks ago and then I listened to it again this morning I woke up this morning and thought oh, I just need to listen to it again so I listened to it again and then to hear you share it and, and right now uh, it's just such a beautiful beautiful thing for us to recognize that miracles happen to start to see the miracles in our life and and to recognize the what we might think of as the little things mm -hmm. as the miracles that are happening in our life which just strengthens our hope it strengthens our hope to do what we need to do to continue to move forward 
Yes, exactly. Beautiful, beautiful. Exactly. Yeah, so fun. Anything else that you would like to share? And, and I, I've written down miracles I received in relation to. That's that's the assignment to make. Start making the list. <laughs> yes. I'm going to make the list as soon as we're done recording because there is a miracle I want right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly. Oh, exactly. Yeah. You know, this has been this is something that I have shared multiple times with many clients, how important it is to start seeing the progress that we're making, how important it is to start seeing the miracles, because when we do, that's when the snowball starts rolling downhill. And all of a sudden you're just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and this, oh my gosh, and this, you know, and and when you are experiencing that, it definitely strengthens your hope and your resolve to keep going. Absolutely. Well, share with us where people can find you. Where's the best place to find you, Seidel? You can find me on Facebook. I have a group called Sing Your Soul with Seidel Schultz, which is so fun. <laughs> I love it. Um, Sing Your Soul with Seidel Schultz. Um, and then I have a website also it's enjoying your voice dot VIP member vault.com. So that's also another place. And then YouTube, uh, my YouTube channel is sing your soul. Cool. And that's fun too. So every Tuesday I share a translation of a different song this past Tuesday. I did, um, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. <laughs> um, and this is, it's like the follow-up for when you believe like what happens after you believe and then you ask for the hippopotamus for christmas <laughs> <laughs> kind of fun that's anyway really so fun. i do different song translations every tuesday in the month of december i'm doing christmas songs yeah it's really amazing and it's opened my eyes to really look at uh, more closely like what music is going through my head what what keeps kind of showing up is there a message in there for me um it just there's so many many ways that that has been super powerful for me so i thank you thank you thank you for being here it's been such a delight it's a huge delight to have you here thanks julie i had so much fun yay